Hello to me, it's Miko, Sam Possible. Miko, my name is Taffer16, and welcome back to another reaction video, and welcome to my seventh and final reaction to Brass Eye. Well, maybe. I might do a rewatch of the final episode, which I saw first. I'm not decided yet. It has been ten. Ten hours. Uh, which means that it's time to watch the last episode of the first series of Black Eye. Of, of Black Eye? <laughs> I said Black Eye. Of Brass Eye. There we go. Uh, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> Uh, this is called Decline, which is a good representation of my mental state. So let's watch it. One more time. Maybe. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? I am proud to be stupid. Tonight on Brass Eye, are we in a state of irreversible decline? What's the reason? What can be done about it? And if there is a solution, who on earth is going to put it into action? Not me. Or is everything just great? <laughs> <laughs> everything's fine. Whole show budget right here. Wait, did I already make this? Yes. Yes, I think I did. Still applies. Good evening. Now, this is the nerve center of tonight's program. To help paint a true picture of the state of Britain, we have uh, live surveillance cameras out. One of them has a reporter stuck on the front. Austin oh. Tasseltine. Austin, what are you doing? I'm uh, at a garage in the center of Clapton in London, um, which is raided every 35 minutes, day and night. So oh. we hope that during the next uh, half hour or so, we may well see some action here this evening. We certainly do. Now, just five minutes ago, we received these disturbing pictures from a camera in a playground. They show an apparently innocent-looking children's game, which is, in fact, an exchange of drugs. <laughs> there they go. And if you oh. think about it, those two children are extremely lucky not to have been killed to bits. Oh, my God. Oh. The state of Britain. Not Britain. 1996. What is the true state of Britain? Basking in rude health or sick to the guts. It's the model monitor now reading less than two models per head oh. due to massive value hemorrhage. Some would say Tish and Fipsy, but others wouldn't. Oh. Due to repeat woundings from weapons like this. America! This. Fuck yeah! Come this this save is my fucking day, happens. yeah. And pop! He's always looking for trouble. The new single by Blouse is a song of love to Myra Hindley. And it's caused more stink than a bomb in one of those holes in the ground at a rock festival that everybody shits in. <laughs> when I saw your photo in the press, I thought, is she blonde under her dress? I thought, I hope they make her take off her dress for the next one. But they didn't even know it would be so much better if I had them around. I sit down and have a fact. Myra Hindley's a very complex <laughs> woman, you know, and this song is about her hair. Right. <laughs> Is this the killers? Is that what it's supposed to be? <laughs> I don't think there's a single reference. Is this supposed to be the killers? <laughs> which I think maybe add a slight problem. Every time I see your picture, it totally is. I love the killers for the record. I do think if somebody's gone and bought this record, just because of the fuss that's been made about it, I think they should throw it away. And then they should go and buy another copy because they like the song. You better watch out, lady, I'm gonna have you later. Just because I want to, just because I can get her and you can't. So hold on, you twat. <laughs> Can't get enough of this Traditionally, we turn to the Bible for help, but now even that's been devalued by those who used to espouse it. Terry Waite, oh, no. once special envoy to the Archbishop of Canterbury, has been paid two million pounds to write oh. a fifth gospel to replace the existing four. Jesus didn't know he was Jesus until he'd been chained to the radiator for some time. 
Are we now utterly without guns? Oh no, the killers only formed in 2001. The popularity really? of events like this. Okay, well, never mind then. Next Still week, sounds just like Peter the killers. Peter Sutcliffe <laughs> takes to the West End stage to star in a musical of his own life. On oh, yeah, there it is. from Broadmoor Prison, Sutcliffe has been rehearsing intensively for three months. Sutcliffe, Sutcliffe. The role includes singing police chases. <laughs> You'll never get me in the slammer. But finishes with Sutcliffe atoning for his crimes. And I really am so very truly sorry. Co-star Marigold Blenny says he's a kind man with a sense of humour. Oh, you see how dark it is here. I mean, he's always, he's always jumping out at you. Oh, like this. So what's the audience going to make of it? I think they'll go away thinking, maybe, maybe he's really mis misunderstood man. Maybe that you know, 20 years ago he was taking the piss. But not everyone sees the positive side. Peter Sutcliffe is allowed oh, out yeah. under police escort from Broadmoor to perform a work about his own life in musical form. The catch is, you see, he, he appears on stage and he says, I'm sorry. I don't care, don't care what he's saying. Don't he say he's <laughs> forfeited his rights to society yeah. by doing so much damage to society? His agent says it's a... His agent? What a game he's got here. Yeah, yeah, I know. What a, Isn't an it, agent? It, well, it's a, you know, who's in jail for the, show, the producer, The producer of the show. The producer of the show. Well, there shouldn't be a show. Should we <laughs> revive our ailing culture, or should we just put it out of its misery? Or should we bring it back to life and then shoot it for letting us down so badly? Oh! You haven't got a clue, have you? No. But you will do if you watch for 30 minutes. Gotcha. It's only a 23-minute program, though. Now, if you want to take part in the programme and let us know what you think of Britain's state of decline, then please do make use of our phones. Gotcha. Uh, just like to check at that garage where there could be an incident at any moment. Austin Tasseltine is there. Austin, anything... Uh, Austin, oi! Anything happened? Oi! No, uh, nothing... Well, I mean, earlier on, there was a small incident with a pen, but, uh, no, nothing serious, no. Can you tell me exactly what you mean by a small incident with a pen? Well, we don't know for sure. So why mention uh, it? it? Just, it was a small incident, that's all, with a pen. Thanks, Austin. Well, now to shocking events that have actually happened as we lift the whistle on drugs in the workplace. No. And show how employees at Shaftesbury's Jams in Colchester are using illegal high drugs on a daily basis. Shaftesbury's Jam has run at a profit since 1977. Yes, Staff are encouraged to use it's cannabis, it's cocaine, it's crack it's and heroin whenever they feel the need. Well... It's the weekly production meeting. One out of four the new fine. product, Loganbury Jam, is behind schedule. Yeah, there is a delay. Um, it's a two-fold problem, really. Um, and here's a clear indication from marketing about five weeks ago of the shape of jar that we were going for. If I'd had it then, we'd, have, we'd, have, oh. well, we'd only be about a week behind now. But, I've, got a, um, I've got a couple of points I'd like to make here. I mean, <clears throat> Graham's lead times were way too long. Look, they're not my lead times. These are the times given to me by the company. Well, the company has used drugs to improve its performance for the past 17 years. Far too long. That's what's holding us up. Exactly. An hour later, well, uh, so the oh, drugs no. are speeding efficiency and decision making. Yeah. The odd shirt is changed as old veins are damaged, and a small vomiting has taken place. Oh. There's no conceivable way we can make a profit. It's pretty fucking simple. The only problem seems to be Matthew. A new recruit from Spiller's Dog Foods, who's inexperienced at crack. He's beginning to suffer. We do still have a prestigious product, Mandy, but I must afraid I must agree with uh, Matthew on this point. Because of uh, oh, no. financial restraints, um, our hands are tied. What if the lids were berry shaped? Okay. We have berry shaped lids. No, we'll, 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 we'll start at seventy percent, and then over a two-year period, we'll. Decrease to uh, a 55 percent. 18 months. I just, I, I really, I don't see how we can do that. And well, I... because of our uh, restraints, I'm afraid. <sighs> Run it. Yeah, we will. I've decided. And I've decided that we'll start at 70 percent, and over a two year period, Jesus. we'll reduce to 55 percent. This makes me want to watch a smoking room, and I don't know why. Uh, no, I think <laughs> um, two years has got to be the period, um, Matthew. I think 18 months is, is, is too short a time. Next business <clears throat> apricots. More jar trouble ground. Um, I, yeah. Uh, they're, they're breaking. It's just a, it's a temperature control. Jam's coming out about a couple of degrees hotter than normal. Uh, just really got to work on the thermostat and the valves. 
it should be all right. It's nothing to do with the uh, German <coughs> machinery. No, the machinery is not, but the machinery itself. In time, Matthew will learn his level. With company profits still rising, it is unlikely that anyone here will want to change the chemistry. Good Lord. Well, he married her. What does he expect? We're back live but, now, going to that garage which we're expecting to be raided at any second. Come Austin on, Raiders. Time is there. Austin, anything happened? Nothing. Damn no it. violence or stabbings? None at all, Chris, no. What about those men behind you? What are they doing? I, I think they're just buying some petrol. Are you sure? Are you buying some petrol? Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Austin. Well, if that apparently innocent-looking purchase did turn into a shooting, then this is what it would look like. Oh. 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 Now, according to experts, that's exactly what we would happen. We certainly hope oh, so, yes. belt up. I'm sitting opposite a man, he knows nothing, he talks all the time. The result is he's a trenchant buffoon, he has no idea how to present television shows. He looks ridiculous in that fashion wear, he swans around all the time hoping that people will recognise him, when in fact nobody's even remotely interested. Uh, he's taking up enough time on this show already and he hasn't even opened his mouth. God knows why he's here, I've nothing to ask the guy. And uh, for all I know, he may well be a bit of a Coco Shunter too. Dark as how? What's um, a Coco Shunter? Coco Shunter, that's just what I've got. Oh, sorry, that's the introduction to Robert Elms. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do you know Robert Elms? I've just read out the introduction to Robert Elms. She just caught fire. It wasn't my fault. Oh. Back to our live cameras now. It's probably your fault. Austin Tasseltine is at that garage. We're expecting to be raided at any moment now. Austin, any incidents yet? There's still nothing going on here, Chris, apart from um, young seagull that seems to have broken into the booth and is making the man there rather unhappy. Fucking bird. <laughs> Fucking bird. Why was it golf? In a few oh, minutes, has even our sense of fair play been eroded? News Expos on's the growing fashion for torturing golf caddies. There's uh, what they call a tea sandwich. And you hear no. that question, do you want tea? And that means just 20, 25 golf teas, mixture of wood and plastic in two big hunks of bread. And you're forced to eat that. Oh. Oh. Uh. The broadcaster and entertainer Clive Anderson has been shot dead by television host Noel Edmonds at his uh. house in Cornwall this evening. Shit! Police attended the incident but were prevented from entering the grounds by machine gun fire. From Cornwall, Vivian Banch reports. The incident took place at around 7.30 during dinner when Mr Edmonds produced an automatic weapon and began shooting indiscriminately at his guests. One servant witnessed the bloodbath but managed to escape intact. Uh, I came round the grounds, round the back way, and then got through the fence over here. Any idea why Edmonds has done this? No idea. He's, he's never done crazy. it before. An hour later, Edmonds appeared at a top window with blood <laughs> on his face and threw what may have been a head onto the ground below. It is not known what happened to the other guests, but Edmonds has now taken up position on his roof with an armory of precision weapons. Less than half an hour ago, he was seen firing a rocket launcher at a wedding party over a mile away. The estate is now surrounded, but police fear he may take to the air in a <laughs> helicopter gunship and start spreading his massacre over hundreds of miles. I agree. Vivian Banch, Channel 4 News, Broomfields. The world of show business has tonight reacted with sadness and horror. Well, I just heard a rumour about <laughs> it. I, uh, I don't know what's happened at all. Apparently Clive Anderson was shot. Clive Anderson was shot by who? Not by, by Noel Edmonds, yeah. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I'd say there's no excuse. None whatsoever. And if Edmonds is still inside the house? What? No. Well, just shoot him. I mean, people like me be supposed to be rascals. But it's your Edmonds, your hunger for guy, all so-called nice people. They ought to shoot him off the roof as quickly as possible. Yes. <laughs> and there'll be an update at 11.30 after our next scheduled programme. Good God. That's funny. Coming up. 
Can our decline be blamed on God? Yes. This is the house of God. So where's the landlord? It's yeah. infested with rot. I doubt if he's paid a visit in 20 years. These people, look at them. They're nothing more than tenants in a dead man's shack. That idiot pukes it out and they hoover it up like sick puppies. Just a second, Father. When did you last check your facts? My point entirely. We've had this book analyzed. It reads like the ramblings of a drugged horse. The question tonight, is God confused like his prating truth pimps or is he dead? <laughs> he did be running. The Catholic Church is in turmoil after an apparition claiming to be Christ drunkenly cursed pilgrims at a holy site in Yugoslavia. He said St. Peter was a monkey and we must drink his peace. Cardinal Hume was badly shaken by the vision and today issued what could be a resignation statement, saying, It was bad enough to see him curse like a footballer, but I lost my faith completely when he farted on my balls. <laughs> Balls. Welcome back. I was about to read out some of this drivel that you've been phoning in all evening, but luckily we've been saved from that because there has been an incident yes. in that garage. Nothing more than the seagull attack when we were last there. Was it no Evans? A bit more dramatic. Austin Tassel time. What's happened? Oh. Things have become completely exciting here because the ferocity of the seagull became very unpleasant uh, towards the man and the man panicked and started uh, shooting at it with some flaming lighter fuel. That's when I thought, no, because that garage and, and the bird caught fire and smashed through the window into the forecourt next to a man who was filling up his car with petrol. And at this point, I, I find myself flying through a hedge with precaution. The garage man produced an air pistol and started shooting at the bird. But instead, he hit the man in the knee. And the, the man, I think, must have wheeled around and sprayed absolutely everything with petrol because when the bird blew up, the whole place went sky high. And I've certainly never seen any... I mean, I'm not sure if this is a true disaster or just a cross between a very unpleasant event and a, a rather stupid one. Maybe it's Noel Edmonds from Rocket Launcher. <laughs> no, I'm at Frankie. This is the Frankie Fraser madometer, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a low miff down here, a mad as a lorry up that end and all the stages in between. Ooh. Some examples, right? Uh, somebody gives you a bit of uh, verbal GBH of the ear roll. Is that, is that low? That's low, yeah. That's low, okay, so that might go there. Some Herbert's touching up your bird. Wouldn't like that, no. Okay, fondled by a nonce. Oh, it's tougher for that. Right, okay, <laughs> so that might be up here. Being grassed up to the filth. That would have to go up here. Yeah. Right up here. OK, now I'm interested to see what happens now. Reading about a pervert who interferes with the kids. Ooh. Well, if you had another one further along here... So that can go actually off the scale? It, yeah. All right, now I just want to... Anything go with him. Anything at all? Anything. Right. Here you are being grassed up to the filth. How would you feel if you there had accidentally grassed yourself? Well, that's my own fault in the bed, wasn't it? So that, that will make you less mad? Well, if I was exactly, you'd only grasp yourself, you'd have yourself to blame, but how enough could you grasp yourself? I don't know, you might have got drunk or something, you might have given no. yourself away. No way, no, we, you don't do that. That can't happen, no, we're too experienced now. Was there ever a time when you weren't no, experienced? Never. No, no. <laughs> do you think you were born experienced <laughs> enough not to grasp yourself? I think so, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, there's God. Whatever our state of decline, there's no denying the power of miracles to focus hope. Okay. Moss Staples has been to Ireland where he done this. Where he done? Bella Crean, rural, pastoral and peaceful. The last notable event here was in 1792 when the nationalist Patrick Duggan single-handedly besieged the British army until it starved to death. Oh. But for that, hey. Ballacreen wouldn't bother a single map. Or a guidebook. There's only one entry. It's less than an inch long. But all that's changed now because of that one. Patricia O'Donnell, oh. the local girl who says she saw the statue of Mary driving a car through a field. My God. Patricia, what does the statue do? It... It, it kisses me and... Um, 
tells me everything will be all right with Daddy. Two days later, Spike de Nabany claimed the statue had driven into his garage and asked for petrol. I thought I heard it say very quietly, <laughs> fill her up. So I did. <laughs> she pulled the face. Went like this. Villagers at the grotto started incorporating the face into their prayers. Amen. <laughs> Many say they hear the sound of roaring engines or see puffs of smoke from the grotto exhaust pipe. The driving statue has also brought pennies from heaven. If you look for a doubt here, you won't find one here. The proof for me is that they found a white plaster powder and they're after sending it off for testing and the results came back and there's virgin DNA in the plaster. No one takes it more seriously than Patricia's mother. I gently suggested she might like to pray in the middle of the road and that if she were to be killed by a car, then the chances of her going to heaven would be higher. When you're kneeling on uh, the road, do you think, I want a car to come and hit me? Yes. Kneeling girls, statues, driving cars. What's going on? I don't Ten know. Ten years ago, a man was arrested in the area for driving statues around in a car. Was it him? Right, not you then. He told us not. Could the priest explain it? Nah, I, sure well, I think it's unlikely it was a miracle, but the fact that the car has been driven on the right-hand side might indicate that... Wow, he looks like Father Ted. Around. No. <laughs> the most likely explanation is that people are just seeing no. some blue light... He looks like Father Stone, I'm sorry. Strut. Looks like Father Stone. Try telling that to these bog brain Murphys. You'd have more chance of getting a blowjob from the Pope. What? 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 Give me Well, just a moment to recap on the state of Britain. Great. The phone calls tonight have been described variously as rabid, pig ignorant, and stultifyingly ill-informed. Sound about right. Thanks for those. Mm. Just want to go back to that exploded garage because it could, of course, still be the scene of a late-night incident. Austin Tasseltine, will you stay there for us all night? Yes, yes, I will. Yes. Good man. And we leave you tonight Poor Austin. with a question: As we approach the third millennium, have we really come to this? Ooh. Ooh. I'm afraid the answer is yes. Good night. Of course. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Shoot a second. Did a runner. <laughs> oh. Earlier this evening, we announced that Clive Anderson had been shot dead. We would like to apologise for that announcement because we made it without first informing his family. Oh. <laughs> that part of Boise was so funny. His fucking reaction. What? No. <laughs> Rest in peace, John Jealous, by the way. He passed away just like, just what, a year and a half ago, I think? Yeah, I think it was like... Like, maybe mid-late 21, I think, yeah. Rest in peace. Um, so that was... That might have been the best episode of the show, to be honest. Like, that was a hell of a way to end off uh, the show. I think I think it maybe was intended to be the end of the time. I don't think the special came until, like, two, three years after. So at the time, it was the intended ending. Um, that, that, was, that was really good, to be honest. Um, so, we've now completed Brass Eye, The Day Today, and Jam. Um, there's still, a 
and the IT crowd. If you count that stuff of Chris Morrison, what's um, what's that other Chris Morris show? What was it called? Nathan Barley? That's it, right? Yeah, that's Chris, Chris Morris and Charlie Brooker. How many episodes did that have? Six. Typical. Um, I guess we'll start on that next. Nathan Barley. That'd be a good idea uh, to do next. Uh, for now, though, that is going to do it for my seventh and final reaction to Brass Eye. Again, if you would let me know in the comments down below if you would like me to rewatch the last episode of the show. I'm leaning towards doing it just because I did it four years ago when I wasn't as familiar. So let me know if you'd like me to rewatch it. I'm, I'm very much open to, though. But that is it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, my Twitch, I stream every single day. My second channel, free skin reviews. My Twitter, if you want to follow me on Patreon. If you want to support me on my daily motion, all things are in the video description down below, as well as Twitch Files channel, the community Reddit. Thank you to all my patrons, also are named in the video description. If you didn't know, you can be a patron on me for as little as $1, dollar, one pound. In addition to your name down there, you also get extra reaction videos, as well as a reading comments up to a day early, sometimes more. Well, that being said, though, my name is Taffer. It's been my seventh reaction to Brass Eye, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.